yesterday we start talking about maximum and minimum values, right? We say sometimes we need to know the maximum and minimum values of the function. So let's consider a couple of examples where we need to calculate the maximum and minimum values of the function. Uh, let's say um, you toss the ball, okay, or threw the ball to the high, and you record at speed, okay? So the speed is high in the beginning, right? Then it it makes it becomes slower and slower, right? So recording with the time. So with the time, the speed becomes lower and lower. Okay. Or another example of the function would be the distance, which is covered by your the height. Let's say. Okay. The the height. So you um. Throw the ball up, and you measure the height every second, okay? And you measure how the height is changing. So in the beginning, it was in the down, right? The, on the earth, then it becomes upper and upper until some point, then it goes back, right? This is not the trajectory of the ball. This is the height, right? Because the trajectory of the ball might be, may fall like immediately or something like that, right? So this is the height, how the height is changing. Or another example which we consider yesterday as well was the uh, consumption of your car, the petroleum consumption. Which depends on the speed, okay? For example, if you would like to travel between the two cities, If you would like to tra uh, travel between the two cities, and have you ever tried traveled this? So have you ever seen this? This like a, th there is a screen in the car which shows you the consumption of the petroleum every second. It can show you even every second average consumption or every second consumption. So you know. So if you drive, let's say sixty or seventy kilometers per hour out of the city in the highway, your consumption will be higher than you will drive ninety kilometers. Okay. So if you drive more than 90 kilometers, for example, 120 kilometers per hour, then your consumption will be bigger again. Do you know this rule? So if your speed is too low or too high, then the consumption is big. Your speed should be optimum at some point so that the consumption will be minimum. Okay? So let's see. When your speed is 60, it's lower. So if you stay at some point, it's the consumption is higher. Then if you drove like, for example, 40, 50, 60 kilometers, it's higher, then it's become closer, uh, smaller and smaller when you reach the 60 kilometers per hour, or sorry, 90 kilometers per hour. Then if you drive faster, then again, it becomes more, okay? The energy consumption becomes more again if you drive more than 90 kilometers in a highway. Okay, so some examples of the functions, and here I would like to know, okay, so if, if I have some car, okay, so obviously this graph depends on what kind of car you're driving, but this is more or less true for any car, okay? So let's say you know the graph of the energy consumption of your car, which depends on the velocity. You would like to know at which speed you need to drive to the next city in order to have the minimum consumption of your car, okay? So in order to spend the minimum amount of the petroleum, okay? So the typical problem where we are interested to find the minimum or the maximum values of the function, okay? So here, if I say it, so here, so in this topic, we're going to discuss the two questions, okay? So at which speed you need to drive to the next city in order to use less petroleum, the first question. And the second question is, if you, uh, what is your minimum energy consumption? Okay, do you feel the difference? The first question is, at which speed you need to drive in order to use the minimum amount of the petroleum? The second one is, the, what is the minimum um, 
consumption. For example, uh, for example, if you have a spark, it's like I think five, the minimum, right? No. No, no. Outside the city, when you drive 90 kilometers per hour, I think it is like around 5.5 or something like that. The minimum one. Okay? 5.1, the minimum one. If you drive, for example, exactly like 90 kilometers per hour, your energy consumption will be 5.5. You understand what does it mean, 5.5? 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers, right? If you drive faster, for example, 120, so this might be 8 liters per 100 kilometers. Okay? So there are two questions. At which speed you need to drive in order to have 5.5 consumption? And what is this minimum? What is this, whether this is 5.5 or whether this is 6 or whether this is 7, depending on your car? Okay, two questions. So now, do you understand what, for what purpose we need to use, we, we, so we need to find the minimum and maximum? So this, you can apply this to many, many problems in fact. Okay? So now we will discuss the same thing mathematically, okay? So let's consider the parabola or some curve. Let's say y is equal to the f of x. Is this equal to the x minus t in the square plus 1? So what kind of curve is this? Is it a circle? Why it is not circle? Maybe it's circle. It was the center. Huh? It's because of plus one? No? Because of what? Because of this y, right? So for the circle, I need to have y square here as well. Right? So we just shifted, right? Do you remember we discussed the transformation of the function? So this function is shifted to the right. Is the t units, right? So when you subtract the from the argument minus t, it, it is shifting to the right, to the t unit. When you add some number, it go up to one unit, right? So this is the classical parabola, which is shifted to the t units, to the right, and one unit to the up. So it looks like here. And I would like to know, <coughs> okay. So here, this is t, and here, this is 1. My function is f of x. Again, I would like to answer to the two questions. What is the minimum value of the function? And the second is, what is the point, or at which point, at which point the function attains its minimum. So could you please try to answer me for this question? No, again. So there are two minimum numbers, right? Either one or the two. Okay, so always, so it depends what I'm asking you. So what is the minimum value of this function? Is t. Basically, minimum value means the minimum height of the function. Okay, maximum value means the maximum, uh, the highest point. Okay, minimum is the lowest point. Okay, lowest or highest is here on this axis, right? So the minimum value of the function is t, right? And the point where this function attains its minimum value is 1, okay? Again, according to this graph, so the car attains its minimum consumption at a 90 kilometers per hour, okay? And its minimum consumption is 5.5 kilometers, 5.5 uh, liters per 100, per 100 kilometers, okay? So this will be 5.5 liters. Again, so if you have got the function, we're interested to answer these two questions. What is the minimum value of this function, okay? And what is the value of this x, of this point, x coordinate, where this function attains its minimum? Okay? So from this question, the minimum value of the function is t, right? 
and the point where it attains the steel is one. Okay? So for many problems, we're going to get the steel result. Okay? So before we go further to find, to, to discuss the algorithms of finding the minimum and maximum, let us define what is the minimum and maximum. Okay? Definition. So let we're given some function and let C is some number from the domain of the function. Then we call f of c s. Absolute maximum if the value of the function at this point c, do you understand what does it mean c? Is you choose some point on the x line, okay? So for example, here or here, some c, okay? c might be 1, 2, minus 10, doesn't matter. Some c. You choose the c, then you evaluated the value of the function. You found the height of the function at this point c. Okay? And we call that f of c is the maximum value of the function if it is highest. Right? If f of c is bigger or equal than any of the value of the function. Right? So it is bigger or equal than f of x for all values of the x from the domain of this function, okay? And we call the f of c as absolute minimum if f of c is the lowest point, right? So the value of the function at this point c is smaller than any other value of this function for any other number, okay? For all x's from the domain, okay? So today we're going to define two more maximums and minimums. We're going to call them as local maximums and local minimums. So we call as a local maximum, we call f of c as local maximum if f of c is bigger or equal than f of x for all x near the c, okay? So you consider the small area around the c, and near the c, this value of f of c should be bigger than all the other values. And this f of c is called local minimum, If f of c is smaller than f of x for all x near the c. Okay? So I need these two things, so we'll all figure out so why we need this. So let us draw our function again in order to try to figure out what we need to do in order to find this minimum value and minimum point. So let's say I've got this parabola again. I would like to figure out how to find a minimum. So do you have any ideas? So if you draw this parabola, right, and if you see that this is parabola, then you can know, okay, so the minimum is here, right? So is it possible to figure out the minimum value and the minimum point without drawing this? Using the derivatives, right? Do you remember what was the derivative? The derivative of this function at some point, for example, at some point here, uh, x1, let's see. What is the derivative at this point? Graphically, it's a slope of the tangent line, right? So if I draw the tangent line, it tells me it's slope, right? So if I draw the tangent line to this point, it tells me the slope.
So what will be the value of this loop? So, okay, so let me tell you, is it positive or negative? Positive, right? Okay, so if I choose the point here, for example, here, x2, and if I drew the tangent line, the derivative of this curve at this point x2 tells me the slope of this tangent line. It, okay, so it doesn't tell me what is the tangent line. I mean, I can use the slope in order to figure out what is the tangent line, right? But it gives me one number, right? You find the derivative, then once you found the derivative, you substitute this value to the derivative, right? Then it tells you one number. This number is how the line, the tangent line is slope, right? Yes? So here, this is some positive number, and here it is some negative number. Okay? Now, at this point, in the point of minimum, here, what will be the tangent line? It will be some horizontal line. Right? So what is the value of the slope? Zero, right? The slope is equal to the zero. So basically at this point x3, the slope is equal to the zero. So if you have your curve, which is given with the function f of x, if you find its derivative at this point x3, which gives you the slope of this tangent line, and this is equal to the zero, okay? So this is the key idea to find the minimum or the maximum of the function. So graphically, do you see this? So if you find the tangent line, the tangent line is a horizontal line, its slope is equal to the zero, okay? So in order to find the minimum points or minimum values, we need to find all possible points on the x line where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the zero. Or we need to figure out all points on the x line where the derivative of the function is equal to the zero. Right? Is it the right idea? Okay. Now, th there is another problem. So we will consider a couple of problems where this doesn't work, okay? So this is our idea, right? For, okay, so let's do this. So our function was like this. So f of x was x minus t in a square plus one, right? We say that I need to figure out all the points x where the derivative is equal to the zero. You understand why? Because at those points, the tangent line is horizontal, right? When it goes up and goes down, right, the tangent line is horizontal. Or when it goes up and goes down, or right, like this, the tangent line is horizontal. Do you understand this? So this is the reason why the derivative is equal to the zero. We need to look for all the points where the derivative is equal to the zero. So let us find the derivative. So what is the derivative of this function? Hmm? Two x minus two, right, plus zero, right? Multiply it, so according to the chain rule, you have to multiply this with the derivative of the x minus t as well. What is the derivative of the x minus two? One, right, okay. So we need to equalize this to the zero, right, basically. Again, do you remember? We need to equalize this to the zero and find the point x where this is equal to the zero. So what I need to substitute here instead of x so that it becomes zero, two, right? If I substitute x to be equal to the two, the derivative is equal to the zero, right? It means that if I find the derivative of the function at the point two, this derivative is equal to the zero. It has the horizontal tangent line. It is either minimum, either maximum, right? But I know that this is the minimum from the graph, right? So this is the point where the function attains its minimum, right? So we draw the function boundary, two and one. One and two. Okay, so we need to start the lecture again because we have to record the correct one from the beginning. <laughs> Excuse me? Yes, we need to begin. Andrew, can you?
I mean, we're recording the lectures for years. So hopefully you'll understand this. Okay. okay. So the function attains its minimum at the point x is equal to the 2. And its minimum value is, I have to just substitute this x to be equal to the 2 to the here, And it should give me the minimum, right? So this will be equal to 1. 2 minus 2 in the square plus 1, which is 1. Okay? So for every question when I ask you, like for every problem when we need to solve the maximum and minimum problem, you need to tell me the answer to the two problems. Okay? So you need to differentiate them. What is the minimum or maximum value of the function? And what is the point where this function attains its minimum and maximum? Okay? Two different questions. Okay. Now let's consider this function. Let's say I've got some function which has this kind of curve. Like this. Okay? Now what I will do is I will figure out the points where the derivative is equal to the zero. Right? This is what we said. Okay? So the idea would be to find points, all the points where the derivative is equal to the zero or where the tangent line is equal is horizontal. So derivative is equal to the zero here, right? Okay, at some point x1. Derivative is equal to the zero here at some point x2. Okay? And derivative is equal to this here where x is equal to the x2. Okay, so once you found the three points, then you need to tell me which is the minimum, which is the maximum, which is the local minimum, and which is the global minimum, or the global maximum, or local maximum. So, okay, so previously, do you remember we defined what, like, a, the local minimum and global minimum, or the local, global minimum, maximum, right? So, the, its meaning is like this. So, this point, is maximum, but this is the local maximum because there is another point which is higher than this. Okay, maximum, it like, okay, so it usually depends on uh, when I ask you what is the value of the function. Okay, let's talk about this. Like, let's say I would like to ask you what is the minimum temperature. Okay? If I say what is the minimum temperature, what you tell me. It depends, right? Yes, so it depends when. So if I ask you what is the minimum temperature in February, what was the minimum temperature in February, then you tell me, okay, so minus one, right? Or what was the minimum temperature in January, you, you will tell me, okay, so it was minus five, okay? So the local minimum is inside of February, right? So if you consider this February, so there is like, uh, no, it's, it's wrong. So the local maximum is when your function goes up and down, okay? This is the maximum in local because there is another point which is higher than this, okay? It doesn't matter whether we're considering this in the interval or not, okay? So if you consider this function in this interval, for example, only in this interval, okay? This point will be the global maximum, okay? Because inside this interval, there is no other point which is higher than this, okay? So you need to feel the difference between local and global, okay? So if your function goes up and down, and here also goes on down and up. So there are two similar points, right? Because the derivatives there are equal to the zero, right? The first derivative are equal to the zero. And both of the points, in order to reach them, we need to go up and down, okay? But this is higher than this. So that is why this is the global maximum, this is the local maximum, okay? So, but if you consider this function in the interval, for example, only here, then this becomes the global one, because inside this interval, there is no other point where uh, the function is higher than this, okay? So I will ask you this question again and again in every lecture. What is the difference between the local one and the global one, okay? So the, just the maximum is, when your function goes up and down, or you're the highest one, okay? 
I'm saying or because we'll discuss it why it is or. Okay? And if it goes up and down, it is either local one, either global one. If there is another point which is higher than this, then this is the local. Okay? If it is the highest, then this is the global. Okay? Good. Now, so once you found the three points, okay, where the derivative is equal to the zero, how to figure out what is the global one, what is the global maximum, what is the global minimum, what is the local minimum? Yes? Okay. So once you calculated the points, then you can calculate the value of the functions as well, right? For example, here, this will be 3. Here, this will be 1. And here, let's say this will be 6, right? So you compare them and you can tell me, okay, so the global minimum of the function is 1. And the global maximum of the function is 6. Okay? Without the graph, you cannot tell what is the 3, whether this is the local minimum or local maximum. You cannot tell this. You don't know. Because the derivative is equal to the 0, it means that this is either minimum, either maximum. Right? And since this is inside this interval, you don't know what is this. Okay? Maybe this, this might be the local minimum or local maximum. We will discuss to figure out how to know whether this is the local maximum or local minimum later on, okay? But do you understand that now on we cannot do this, right? So if I don't show you the graph, you can tell me, okay, so the one is the lowest, so that is why this is the global minimum, right? Because you find all the points where the derivative is equal to the zero, right? And this one is the lowest point. Six is the highest point, this is the global maximum, right? But three is, you don't know whether this is the local minimum or local maximum. Okay? Without the graph, we don't know this. We'll figure out how to identify this later on without the graph. Okay? Now, there are some different functions where it is impossible to figure out what is the maximum and minimum, just finding the points where the derivative is equal to the zero. For example, Let's consider the graph of the x cube. The graph of the x cube looks like this. Okay? And let us consider this in some interval. Okay? In the interval, like this. So this graph is f of x is equal to the x cube. We're going to consider this inside the interval between 3 and minus 3. Okay? So is there is a point inside this interval where the derivative of this function is equal to the zero? Yes. Here is this. Right? So derivative of the graph. So maybe this is so this should be a little bit more like a uh, wide. Right? So derivative is equal to the zero there. You can quickly check it, right? What is the derivative of the x cubed? 3x squared. So what is equal to the zero? At x is equal to the zero, right? So there is a point inside this interval where the derivative is equal to the zero, okay? So it appears our idea, so is, does it mean that our idea is wrong? The derivative doesn't give you the maximum? or minimum, because here it doesn't give me any maximum or minimum, right? Okay, so this is neither maximum, neither minimum, right? What I need to do? Okay, so what is the derivative of this function when x is equal to the 3? Yes. I would like to find the minimum and maximum exactly in this interval, from minus 3 and 3. Okay, it means that sometimes it doesn't show us, so the derivative becomes zero, not only when the function attains the maximum or minimum. It's okay. Okay. Uh, we need to find the points where the derivative does not exist. Okay. So here, the function discontinues. Okay. So it stops here. 
So that is why there is no derivative of this function here or here, okay? So we need to figure out what are the values of this function at the points where the derivative is equal. Where the uh, derivative does not exist, okay? Then we need to compare all of them, okay? So here, it, it is like this. If the, so if you know the point where the function attains its maximum, then the derivative is equal to the zero there, for sure, 100%, okay? Why is it worse? It doesn't work always, okay? If the derivative is equal to the zero, it might attain, uh, attain its maximum there, okay? Or it might attain its minimum there, okay? You understand this? For example, um, we discussed this previously, right? So I say, okay, so if you are SOCI student, then you are the student of IUT, okay? For sure, 100%, right? But if you are the student of IUT, you might be a student of SOCI, right? Do you feel this, right? So here's the same thing. So if you know the point where the function attains its maximum, then derivative is equal to the zero there, okay? You can write this down. If you, if you know the point, if you know the point where the derivative, uh, where it attains, sorry, where it attains, it's maximum, then derivative there is equal to the zero, okay? For sure. So oh, basically, actually, this is a theorem. Theorem of Fermat. If you know that your function is minimum or maximum, local minimum or local maximum, then derivative is equal to the zero. But it doesn't work always to the reverse direction. Okay. So if you know that derivative of the function is equal to the zero. It may attain its maximum or minimum. Okay? But finding the derivative is the necessary condition. It is not sufficient. Okay? So if you find all the points where the derivative is equal to the zero, this will be the necessary thing which you have to do in order to find the maximum or minimum. But this is not sufficient, okay? So it, it doesn't guarantee you that you will find the maximum or minimum, but this is the necessary thing which you have to do, okay? For example, coming to the lectures and the calculus and writing the notes, this is the necessary to pass this course, but it doesn't guarantee you that you will pass this course, right? Okay, this is the necessary condition. Again, finding the points where the derivative is equal to the zero is the necessary condition, necessary condition. Okay? Um, let's consider an example. So is it, do you know a function where the derivative does not exist, but it attains its minimum there? Huh? No, no, we don't concede the infinity, okay? So derivative does not exist, but it attains its minimum there. Yes, it's like the absolute value of the x, okay? So let's consider the example of the function. This is absolute value of the x, y, right? So for all the values x, when x going up, 
then the y is going up, right? When x is going down, the y is also going up, right? Because it's like it takes the absolute value of x, right? The derivative of the function does not exist here because it has a corner. Do you remember we discussed where, in which cases they, we fail to find the derivatives? Right? For example, if your curve has the corner, okay, or discontinuity, or in the step functions as well, okay, if there is a discontinuity, then you cannot find its derivative, or it, it has a corner. Also, you cannot find its derivative. So derivative does not exist, but it has a minimum, right? So it appears just finding the derivatives is not enough, so we need to find also the points where the derivative does not exist, okay? So let us make the definition. The point C is called the critical point If one derivative of the function at this point is equal to zero, or derivative of the function at this point c does not exist. Okay. Now we need to write down the algorithm of finding the minimum and maximum. Okay. So let me write this the algorithm. So what we have to do in order to find the minimum or maximum. So first thing, we need to find all critical points. Find all critical points. Two, find the values, so including the boundaries, right? Including the boundaries. Find the values of the function at the critical points the largest one will be the global maximum the largest is the absolute maximum and the smallest is the absolute minimum. Let's do an example. Let's say we're given a function f of x, which is equal to the x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. We need to figure out what is this global maximum and global minimum in this interval from minus one over t until four. Okay, find the global maximum and global minimum of this function in this interval between minus one over t and four. Global maximum. global maximum and global minimum. Okay, so in order to do this, okay, let's do this step by step. The first step is we need to find all the critical points. Okay, so we take as derivative and equalize this to zero. So find all the points when the derivative of the function is equal to the zero, because at those points, the tangent line is horizontal, right? So what will the derivative of this function? Is 3x squared minus 6x plus zero, right? You can take out the 3 out of the brackets, or 3x even. This will be x minus t, right? I need to equalize this to the zero and find the points, right? So this will be x is equal to the zero, and x is equal to the two. Two points where the derivative is equal to the zero. But I've got two more points which I have to check as well, okay? The boundaries, right? So x is equal to the x1, x2, x3 is equal to the minus one over t, and x4 is equal to the four. The points which I have to ch check as well, okay? Because for example, your function might be like this, like, like this, okay? Right? So the maximum is attaining in the border, 
Do you see this? Here. The minimum is here, where the derivative is equal to the zero, but the maximum is on the borders. On the borders, the derivative does not exist, right? Because there is a discontinuity here, right? Okay. So we need to now, in a, on a second step, we need to find all values of the function for all of these four points, okay? So our function is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. So I need to find what is the f of 0? This will be 1, right? So you have to substitute 0 to here. So f of 2 is equal to the 8 minus 3 multiplied to the 4 plus 1, which is equal to minus 3, right? 9 minus 12, which is minus 3. So now I need to evaluate f of 4. This will be 4 in the cube is 64 minus 3 multiplied to the 16 plus 1. So this will be equal to the 17, right? So 64 minus 48 is 16 plus 1 is 17. We have to find f of minus 1 over t. This will be equal to the um, minus 1 over 8 minus 3 multiplied to the 1 over 4. What's the minus there, right? Because minus 1 over 2 in the square will be plus 1 over 4, right? So plus 1. Or we can write this as minus 1 minus 6 plus 8 over 8. So this will be equal to the minus 1 over 8. Yes? <clears throat> okay. So now I need to compare. So the largest will be the maximum, right? The maximum of the function is equal to the 17. At the point x is equal to the 4, okay? The maximum value of the function is 17. Do you understand how I found this? I found the values of the function in all the critical points, right? First of all, then I compare them. The largest, which is 17, is the maximum. The smallest, which is what? Minus 3, which attains at uh, x is equal to the 2. Okay? So this is the example which I showed you here in the graph, right? Similar to this. So it attains its minimum in the point where the derivative is equal to the 0. And it attains its maximum in the border, right? Do you see this? And it, so, and it, when we when you start minus one over two, its value is one over eight, right? It's higher than the value at the two, right? And at the two, it attains its minimum, then it attains its maximum in the right border. border here. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So we'll come back to this. Okay. So we'll all figure out how to identify the local maximum and minimum without the graphs as well, okay? With the second derivative, okay? Or you need to tell me intuitively how it is possible to do. Can you tell me intuitively how I can know whether this is the local maximum or local minimum? For example, I know that at this point, f of zero, it is one, right? Uh, no, no, this is not local maximum or local minimum. One, right? So at the point zero, its derivative is equal to the zero, right? And its value is equal to the one, but it is not the neither largest, neither the smallest. I don't know what it is, right? Maybe this is the local maximum. Maybe this is the local minimum. One of them, right? So the key idea to identify this would be like this. So if I know that my function is going down before one, before the zero, right, and goes up, it means that this is the local maximum, right? If it goes down and up, then this is local minimum or maximum. Why? It's going down and up, right? So around the zero, so it goes down and up, it means that this is the local minimum, okay? If it goes up before the zero, then goes down, because obviously it is, it is like this, right? Because the derivative is equal to the zero. It means it's either going down and up, either it's going up and down, right? Because the tangent line is 
zero there at the point zero. Do you understand? We're discussing this point, right? So here, at the point x is equal to the zero, the derivative is equal to the zero. It means the tangent line is horizontal, right? It means that either the function around the zero, right? Going, uh, going up and down, right? Around the zero, either it goes up and down, either it goes down and up, okay? And you will have the tangent line. So it appears the second derivative tells us this thing, okay? It tells us whether the function is going up and down or down and up. Okay, so we'll discuss it next lecture. So today we just need to learn how to find the global maximum and global minimum. Okay, or the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. So let's consider the another example, which is more interesting, I would say. Let's say you've got a Как будет веревка? А? А? Let's say you've got a rope with the length one, one meter, for example. Okay. Now what you need to do is you cut this at some point x. Okay. Cut. Cut it here at some point x. What you will do is you will bend one square using this part of the rope, and you will bend another square using this part of the rope. You understand it? Yes? So you will take this part, so which is x length, and you will make the square. Okay? Some square. What would be the length of each side of the square? Hmm? X over four. Right? Because the perimeter is equal to the x, it means that each side of the square, which is which are all, all of them are the same, is x over four, right? And so, you, okay, you understand this? And using this part, you have to make again the square, right? What will be the perimeter of the perimeter of the square is one minus x, right? One minus this part, one minus x, and the each side of the square should be one minus x over four. Right now, you need to tell me at which point of the x I need to cut the slope maximum area for both of the squares. So you need to sum the area on where. Do you understand the question? So what I have to cut this slope in order to have the maximum area. For both squares, yes. For the sum of the both squares. Why? Why in the middle? Or why not in the beginning? Okay, can you, can you, you should do this. No. Okay, could you please do this? Is it clear what to do? No? You cut it here, right? So, okay, let's go back to our problem again. So, we've got a rope uh, with one meter. We need to cut this at some point so that the squares which we will make using the each part of the rope will have the maximum area, right? So. You said to me the perimeter of the square using this side should be equal to the x. So that is why each side of the square is equal to x over 4, right? You understand this? So you cut this over the air. The length of this rope is x, right? In order to make the square, you have to make the length of the sides of the square to be equal to x over 4, right? What will be the area of the first square? What is the area of the square if you know the side? 
inside in the square. Why? Right? So the height multiplied is a width, right? So height multiplied is a width, right? Okay. What is the perimeter of the second square? Is 1 minus x. Okay, so x is obviously less than 1, right? Because you cut it there. At 1 minus x. What will be the each side of the square? 1 minus x over 4, right? What will be the area of the second square? 1 minus x over 4 in the square, right? So what we need to do? We need to find dx so that the area 1 plus area 2 is minimum. So area 1 plus area 2 is minimum. Is that clear what to do now? Could you please do this? So obviously in exam you will have this kind of problem as well. Okay, the previous one as well and this kind of problem as well. So your function f of x, which gives you the, the, the sum of the areas, will be x over 4 in the square plus 1 minus x over 4 in the square, right? Do you remember what, how we need to find its minimum and maximum? The first step. Find all the critical points. What is the critical point? Is the borders, right? How the x can change? Can, can change? What are the borders of this x? What kind of values of the x you can choose? You can treat either more than zero or equal to the zero, either maximum one, right? You cannot choose two, right? Because the, the length of your rope is one meter. So we need to find the three critical points, right? Or I don't know, at least two. So let's find the derivative of this function. What will be the derivative of this function? Is two x over four, right? Multiplied. Choose the derivative of the x over 4. What is the derivative of the x over 4? 1 over 4. Can you imagine that it didn't record anything? Then we have to make the lecture again. Two x over four multiplied to the derivative of the x over four was one over four, right? Plus, what is the derivative of this part? Is again two multiplied to the one minus x over four, right? Do you see? So, it, like, if you if you don't understand this, like, uh, close your eyes, right, a little bit, so in order to see that, hey, I don't know what is this, but this is something in a square, right? Something in a square is derivative is two multiplied to this thing, right? Multiply to the derivative of the something, right? Again here, close your eyes, right? And something in a square, again. So this should be t multiplied to the something, multiplied to the derivative of the something, right? So what will the derivative of the one minus x over four? Minus one over four, right? So we need to equalize this to the zero. So what we'll have is, so we can cancel all the constants, right? We'll get x minus 1 plus x is equal to the 0. Do you understand how I, how I got this? Right? So here, I cancel this d and this d, this 4 and this 4, right? And this 4 and this 4, right? Because the right hand side is 0, I can multiply anything to the right hand side, right? So if I multiply everything, the left hand side and the right hand side, to the 1 over 2, Right? This term, this term, and this zero. This t will be canceled. Right? If I multiply everything to the 16, this zero multiplied to the 16 will be zero. 
4, 4 will be canceled, and you will have this minus 1 only, right? And this 4, 4 will be canceled, and you will have simply x. So x here, and minus 1 multiplied is a 1 minus x here, right? So x minus 1 plus x, right? And this is equal to the 0, right? So what is the x from here? So x is equal from here is 1 over 2, right? So tx minus 1 is equal to the 0. So that is why x is equal to the 1 over 2, okay? This is not the end because I've got three critical points, right? I need to check all the points. So from here, we find that x is equal to the 1 over 4. Now we need to find the values of this function for each of the points, right? Or, I mean, you can do this at home, but, I mean, this will be the answer, okay? So you need to find, you need to put the x to be equal to the 0, then 1 over 4, then 1, and compare the results, and tell me what is the smallest, okay? The smallest will be uh, the highest, the largest. No, no. It will not be zero. It will be maximum. Okay? The area will be maximum at the house. Okay? So let's check the attendance quickly. Can you tell me? Yeah. 